not a box of junk and garbage. It's a fallen tree for use on your game table. Welcome to another Gamesmith video! Today is part one of a two-part series on creating large fallen logs. You may recall in Scatter Terrain video 13, dealing with small logs, that we used aluminum foil to create fallen logs for use with a standard 28mm miniature. I have a miniature here to show you the size comparison between our 6 foot tall ranger and our quote unquote small log scatter terrain. These logs would be roughly one and a half meters or five feet wide in comparison to our miniature. Now that's a really substantial log. Now let's compare that to this that we're going to be using for our build. Using a paper towel tube by comparison would be three to four and a half meters or 10 to 15 feet wide. That's a rather substantial size for a tree trunk. However, it's not outside the realm of reality. Coastal redwoods and giant sequoias of North America routinely grow to 4.5 to 9 meters wide. That's 15 to 35 feet in diameter. Given the size of this paper towel roll, it's a great place to start our build. However, there is a problem with the seam on our tube, and we want to make sure that that doesn't actually show through on our build. A standard toilet paper roll is about 10 centimeters or 4 inches long, and I think this will be too short and a paper towel roll will be too long. I think that about 8 inches or 20 centimeters will be about the right length, so I can measure that out and cut this tube to the length I want. Of course you can create any length you want for your own logs. Then the excess can be removed and we can use it for another log or an actual part of another tree. To create a branch we need only cut the bottom third or half off at an angle, and then fit the two tubes together where you see fit. You don't even have to limit yourself to one. I like the placement of this branch near the base of our trunk rather than further up the side. Next I want to create some texture at the ends of the log, so I can just cut the cardboard into an uneven shape. Next we'll cover our trunk with aluminum foil. I'm going to need a rather large sheet to cover the tube. I especially want to camouflage the seams on the paper roll. I'm going to accomplish this by folding the tin foil over lengthways. I need to make sure I have enough foil to completely cover the tube. However, I think I am going to be adding a second layer of tin foil, so this doesn't need to fit perfectly. I also want to push the foil down into the ends of the cardboard tube in order to show that it's hollow. I also want to see if I have enough foil to disguise the interior. By rolling it up and putting the foil inside, I can make sure I have the correct length. On a shorter log, I would want to cover the interior too. However, on a larger log such as this, I think I can get away with just the first few inches being camouflaged, so it looks entirely hollow. I also don't think my players will be inspecting the log's interior too closely, so I'll be satisfied by just covering the first few inches on each end. Now that I've started to crumple the foil, I'll just keep doing that in order to create a texture. Next I want to create a glue paste with water and PVA glue. I want a relatively watery mixture, so a 60-40 water to PVA or even a 70-30 will work just fine. You don't need precise measurements, you just want the glue to be somewhat runny. However, you want to make sure that the water and the glue are thoroughly mixed together. We then paint one side of our textured aluminum foil and then wrap it around our cardboard tube. I see here I could have used a larger sheet of tin foil so that the two sides would overlap better but it doesn't matter because I'm going to add another layer. Then on this end I'll just push the foil inside in order to disguise the interior. In the other end I'll cut long slits into the tin foil so the flaps will fold into the tube more easily. Now I have this gap left here so I'll just use my trusty glue gun to seal the foil together. I'm not terribly worried about the seam because when I mount this on a base guess what goes on the bottom? Now we need to let this dry for an hour or so before we move on. Next we want to add another tin foil layer. Again, without any precise measurements, we just want to eyeball this to the right size. Bigger than last time, I think. 
And just like before, we'll fold the foil over on itself and wrap it around our tube. Hopefully you still have some water PVA mixture left over in order to coat your foil with it. When I put my tube on this, I want to make sure that I'm covering that seam. Next, I'll cut the ends of the foil and fold them back into the tube. I'll just use my fingers to press the foil flat inside the tube. This will reinforce the ends against abuse at the table. Next, I'll grab a pair of tweezers and use the tines in order to create streaks in the foil. You can use any tool for this, but you don't want to use anything that's too sharp. The goal here is to create a wood-like grain in the foil by crisscrossing our streaks without cutting or gouging the tin foil. Just like with our smaller logs, as the water in the PVA glue evaporates, the glue will contract and pull the foil into tight, bark-like ridges. If you're concerned about the edges, a thin layer of hot glue will help reinforce the foil. Here's the seam that we want to keep on the bottom. I'll just write bottom on this in order to remind me of where I'm placing this on the table. Obviously the text will be covered up later when we paint the build. Now that I'm left with this silver tube, I want to shape it to look more log-like. And if I do the shaping before the glue dries, the log should hold on to the shape. I think I'll collapse one end of the log, perhaps tapering it to a smaller hollow opening. I also see some of the foil separating, so I'll reinforce the end with hot glue. While the glue is still warm, I'll use my tweezers to texturize it in order to match the foil texture. Next, I want to think about where I'm going to be adding this thick branch to the trunk. Never underestimate the power of planning ahead. I think I want to deform the tube into more of a collapsing hollow log shape. Uh-oh, I see here that I cut the tin foil when I was adding texture with the tweezers. Just a little hot glue inside the seam, and I'll use the hot nozzle to press it down, and then scratch a bit more texture into the tube. Next, I'll reinforce the ends again with some hot glue, since they're most likely to take the abuse at the table. Now you should let this dry at least 8 hours in order to give the water in the glue a chance to evaporate. Next, we want to add our very large branch to the side of our tree trunk. To create the branch, I've just repeated everything we've covered so far. I know we planned ahead, but I just want to find the best location to put our branch. I want a location that has the fewest gaps between the two pieces. And with our trusty glue gun, we can attach the two pieces together. You're going to want to double check to make sure that these parts are secure. Then I'll fill in the gaps with the hot glue and add some texture while the glue is still warm. Wait a few seconds before adding the texture so the glue doesn't actually grab at the tweezers. The next step is to reinforce our tree with a Mod Podge and black acrylic paint mixture. I recommend a 30-70 mixture, 30% Mod Podge and 70% paint. I'm using black paint because I had this mixture left over from a previous build. However, if you want to use another color, such as dark brown or burnt umber for your base coat, you should use that instead. This mixture is more paint than Mod Podge, so it will flow down into the cracks of the texture we made. I will most likely add two layers of this base coat, but you can speed up your build by using black matte spray paint instead. The spray is more likely to completely cover the silver foil, however I like the Mod Podge since it's glue and it will actually reinforce the build. Regardless of how you paint it, make sure that each layer is dry before moving on. The next part of our build is to add some le champagnon, some pilza, or hongos, or fungo, or some bracket fungus, or mushrooms, or fungi, or fungi, however you want to pronounce it, wherever you are in the world. I found these EVA foam shapes at the dollar store and they're perfect for what I have in mind. I also have these EVA foam shapes, which I found at the dollar store, but they come in these stacked layers. These layers are lightly glued together and are quite easy to separate. These are much easier to use than cutting these solid shapes or cutting a thin sheet of EVA foam. I have two different sizes and I can use the hobby knife to separate the parts. Now in case you didn't know, EVA foam is ethylene vinyl acetate and it's very easy to find online or at craft stores. Most cosplayers use EVA foam in order to build up their awesome costumes. I'll cut these circles in half so they have the shelf appearance that I want. 
I'm adding these half circles to the log in order to look like bracket fungus or bark mushrooms that form shelves on the sides of trees. I'll use my tweezers to hold onto the foam while I add some hot glue to the edge. I'll create some clusters on the sides of my fallen tree. The hot glue will deform the EVA foam, so don't put too much on. You just need enough to attach it to your tree. Next, we'll use our Mod Podge and black acrylic paint mixture in order to reinforce our EVA foam fungus. This is part one of our first multi-part video here at the GameSmith. I hope there were a few things that caught your attention. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on fallen trees or log terrain that you've created. If you like what we're doing here at the GameSmith, please hit the subscribe button, and the thumbs up button is very nice too. If you're already a subscriber, please hit the bell icon to be reminded when a new video is released. You might also check out the GameSmith blog and website at thegamesmith.org. For our next video, we'll be adding color and details to our fallen logs. We'll also be adding a base and a few more ingredients to our build that will make this scatter terrain an interesting feature at any table. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.